हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई होप वी ऑल आर हियर एंड वी वुड बी बिगिनिंग विद अ सेशन फॉर टुडे ओके सो आई हैव अ फ्यू थिंग्स टू टेल यू ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू सी एवरीवन स्पेसेस सिंस वी आर नॉट मीटिंग ऑफलाइन आई वुड एटलीस्ट लाइक टू सी यू ऑल ऑनलाइन uh whenever we want to communicate anything ask any questions uh if any valuable inputs or anything that you know of and something that i have not discussed that is to add on to please feel free to raise your hand and unmute and talk yeah i would like to have a more verbal communication with all of you rather than as in the spoken verbal format rather than the written verbal format okay so uh i think you all are ready for today's session and you all are aware uh, about the topic we are going to cover the topic of research voice is breaking a lot is it only from my side can anyone help or understand if it is from my side or her side yes am i audible It's to everyone from her else? side yes ma'am you are audible yes ma'am you are audible okay okay fine fine okay thank you okay so i am uh, starting my screen sharing meanwhile i want you all to think and tell me uh, what all you know about this and before that i want to know um whether you are undergrad students post graduation students anyone pursuing their phd anyone into junior college so if you can just quickly put it in the chat box for uh, if you are doing ba just write ba yeah or bsc if you are doing masters just write pg and if phd you can write phd or mphil okay sir so most of you are from the bachelors and the pg background i could uh, know that someone of you is also from the uh, bcom background so i'm really happy to see someone from a non psychology background attending the uh, webinar for uh, the psychology thing research <coughs> okay great so you all can put it in the chat box meanwhile i want you all to also put it in the chat box whether you are even slightly aware of what is research and uh, anything about research yes if you are just put aware if you are not aware you can just put any so that i understand uh, what all things you all are aware of and how basic or how advanced should i begin i will wait for a minute so that everyone finish थैंक यू ओके ग्रेट सो आई कुड सी द चैट मेसेजेस एंड आई नो दैट मोस्ट ऑफ यू ऑल आर अवेयर अबाउट रिसर्च सो दैट्स अ वेरी गुड थिंग टू नो नाउ दैट यू हैव टोल्ड मी दैट यू ऑल आर अवेयर ऑफ वॉट रिसर्च इज क्विकली गिव मी योर इनपुट्स ऑफ वॉट एवर यू नो अबाउट रिसर्च बी इट समथिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दीज टू डेज बी इट समथिंग दैट इज आउट ऑफ वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दीज टू डेज एनी थिंग दैट यू आर अवेयर अबाउट रिसर्च एंड आई वुड अप्रिशिएट इफ यू ऑल अन्यूट एंड नॉट दिस टाइम just make sure that you are raising your hand so that not everyone unmutes at the same time adrita i can see you so you yes, can ma'am ma it uh, it is a systematic uh, procedure in which we uh, study a particular topic deeply to uh, reach any kind of conclusion ma'am you are uh, muted yeah i'm sorry i said yes it is great a uh, fact finding using surveys is someone uh, saying in the chat box yes definitely uh, any any more inputs about what you know or what you can remember about research now here we form a hypothesis and uh, try to prove it uh, more than proof uh, a better word would be support the hypothesis yeah we yeah. don't definitely necessarily prove it yes okay great 
Anyone else? Ma'am, can I speak? Uh, Nehal, are you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, ma'am, it is creation of new knowledge and the use of existing knowledge in a new and a creative way. Okay, very good. I hope you all are not googling the answers. Uh, someone from Chanakya is trying to say something. Yes. Someone from Chanakya is trying to say something. Uh, okay. So, uh, someone in the chat box is saying it is a formal study of learning and formal way of exposing. Okay. Did you study about something in order to get more information about it? Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Can I? Yes, please. Uh, so basically, research is like a collection of all the study material and like the facts and uh, everything, uh, and uh, coming to a conclusion about a particular topic on which we are doing the research. So concluding all the facts and everything in a collection basis, and uh, like from that we form the hypothesis. Great. Okay. Okay. Fair. Yes. Um, collect and analyze data yes it is a part of research if not the entire research definitely okay fine so uh we will be moving ahead with what is research like you all have said it is just a culmination of what you all have said it is uh research is a scientific and systematic process of investigating a phenomenon has anyone raised their hand or put something in the chat box gathering of data information and facts for the advancement of knowledge definitely okay so when we talk about research research is basically a very scientific and a systematic process of investigating of phenomena phenomena uh, here you can label it as any factor or any variable more specifically or officially used term is variable or correctly used term is a variable uh, currently, if we are just focusing on psychology as a subject, we call it as any kind of a psychological way. Right? Uh, but as a whole research, if you go and see in any domain, be it sciences, be it commerce, be it, be it art or human domains, it is investigating of some kind of a phenomena or a collection of a few phenomena. Okay, why is it called a systematic process? So someone also answered me. Uh, the very first person said that it is a systematic process. So if you would like to share, not only you, anyone else can also contribute. But what do we mean by the term systematic process? Why is research called a systematic process? Ma'am, it follows some uh, guidelines. I must say, it's not that we can do anything with it. it. There are some steps we need to follow to reach the conclusion. Proper okay. steps are more than yeah, more than guidelines. I think the word that you used of following steps or process or a procedure is correct because guidelines is something that falls into yes, research definitely has rules and regulations that we need to follow, but that is more of how we structure the research as a concept of research. It more uh, focuses on the process and the steps. It has hard rules and regulations, yes, it does not include any subjective opinion. I would, uh, I would not say that it does not include a subjective opinion because of a number of factors that we would focus on. Qualitative research is basically more focused on a subjective opinion, a objective anal an objective analysis of some subjective opinions is what we can uh, put it into a qualitative research, but we will definitely come to it. Uh, so like we said, writing a research paper or doing a research definitely has certain guidelines certain rules that we need to follow but the entire process of research as a whole is a step-by-step -step process you cannot directly go and collect data at random you will first have to select a variable then you will have to frame your hypothesis frame a design uh, frame what kind of sample are you going to use put it in a structured format then go and collect the data then un uh, analyze the data with the, either the, with the help of the statistical tools or with the help of a qualitative method. Then come up to the interpretation, that is understanding the meaning of the data, what the data is trying to tell you. Then put on the conclusions or the, um, what do you say, the generalization factors. 
then we will write the scope and limitations so although this format has certain rules but we have to follow that process and that is the reason it is called as a very systematic step by step process now tell me why do we call it scientific why do we say that any kind of a subject or research by itself is also scientific yes okay it is called scientific again because definitely it is uh, evidence based it is objective so even qualitative research wherein there are a lot of subjective opinions and characteristics in play we still have some objectivity with which we analyze and interpret the data definitely it is empirical scientific like everyone said it is based on a certain process it is based on certain objectivity and it is measurable that is the reason we call it scientific any of the psychological phenomena or any of the psychological variable that you take is measurable with any kind of an objective or a subjective test be it personality we have objective tests like 16 pa we also have subjective tests like rorschach or tet so even for the most abstract concepts like personality to more or the very specific concepts like say behavior thinking cognition we have a number of tests that are objective and that help us measure the particular phenomena that is the very important research of scientific uh, that is a very important meaning of the word scientific yeah i hope this is clear because until and unless we understand this particular part of research we are not going to understand anything of the more uh, another important point is it collects analyzes and interprets data so we cannot just sit i have decided the variables now i will sit it is not the process that happens like this you will have to then go and collect the data from an appropriate sample size and the characteristic of samples then we also have to analyze the data and then we have to interpret that is make certain meaning out of the data and then only our research as a whole is complete uh any doubt so far if yes please ask me right now if no i would go be going there okay great now we go on to certain types of research when we talk about certain types of research there are these two specific types of research which are um, no doubt okay okay so there are these two specific types of research wherein we majorly focus on quantitative research and qualitative research so like the name suggests quantitative research is more uh, focused on dealing with numbers and statistics because it is quantitative we can quantify it. again because it has numbers we can easily measure we can easily count and we can easily give a number or a percentage or a mean median mode value out of it right we establish a cause and effect relationship so in quantitative variables we establish certain kind of a cause and effect relationship that like this has caused this a change in one factor has caused a change in another factor a change in one factor along with certain extraneous variables which are definitely errors but still has caused uh, has affected or caused a difference in some other so we study a cause and effect relationship so simple like you know uh, the ozone layer is depleting that is the reason people are probably having skin issues or premature hair grey so this is nothing but the cause is the depletion of ozone layer and the effect of it is some uh, some disease related to your skin or hair for example or even your health for that matter similarly we have a lot of cause and effect relationships in psychology like suppose for example uh, because i am trained uh, i have trained myself into emotional intelligence my level of empathy has increased so the cause is training or intervention of emotional intelligence and its effect is good level of empathy or lower levels of aggression or better uh, being able to acknowledge and label my emotions so these are certain cause and effect relationships the other one is understanding differences between the groups so when there are two groups of people the level of emotional intelligence among men and women so now here there is no cause and effect relationship as such that men i am a man that is the reason i have greater uh, emotional intelligence or i am a woman that is the reason i have greater emotional intelligence nothing like that so there is no reason behind something happening there is just a relationship between the two 
and this relationship is focused upon by uh, understanding the differences between the two groups one group is of the men scores of men on ei and the other group would be the scores of women on emotional intelligence and when they, when we compare that with respect to t tests or oh, we only see the means or we only see the percentages or we just see the raw scores whatever it is we understand that okay for women it is probably greater than men or vice versa so we understand that these two groups are different in terms of the levels of their emotional intelligence as simple as that so no cause and effect just the understanding between the differences understanding about the difference so uh, it also helps to predict or explain the phenomenon so it helps to predict what will happen in future on the basis of this data again it is a prediction it is not a compulsion so the prediction may totally go wrong the prediction may totally be right so it is a 0% or 100% or the prediction may somewhere be from 0.5 to 99.99 any right so we are not confusing ourselves with the term compulsion and prediction prediction is something that you just predict because men have higher level of emotional intelligence their level of empathy will be good this is something that you are just predicting it may or may not happen still men will be lower on empathy okay women are having lesser levels of emotional lower levels of emotional intelligence still they will be good at managing their anger or they will be having great empathy okay so there are equal chances of your results going in either direction that is your predicts or your predictions going in either directions that is supporting or not supporting but what we can do on the basis of the data is predicting so a simple example would be from the first wave of the covid on from that particular data they predicted the number that the second wave will give out the number of people affecting the number of people having asymptomatic moderate and uh, very severe symptoms those going on uh, ventilators those dying so on the basis of the first data collected out of the first wave they are predicting or they are explaining why this number why second wave will be even more disastrous than the third wave so they are predicting as well as they are giving us the information uh sorry second by the first and why third wave is probably going to be milder than the second or if there is a fourth wave fifth wave i hope not but then why is this going to happen so they are also explaining the reason behind the phenomenon right so this is what quantitative focus is on when we talk about the term qualitative uh, it is totally opposite of quantitative it is non numerical in nature uh, the statistical computations are mostly not incorporated also under certain circumstances they do consider the descriptive data descriptive data is the main median and book right very basic small numbers in order to give more objectivity to the data at times uh, sometimes the qualitative analysis is a long analysis so if you want to just write it in short to summarize the analysis at the end in the concluding part then they just throw numbers at the mean scores of this this of uh, women and this this of men uh, show us that you know women are slightly greater on this aspect or men are slightly greater on this aspect so simple means they do not uh, calculate um, what is a complex analysis like t test anova manova and all of those things so generally statistical computations are not there conversation based data collection conversation based data collection basically focuses on things like interviewing um, taking case studies also dealing with any kind of a secondary data so there is a lot of there are a lot of books on emotional intelligence so i start reading that and then i start summarizing so this is a secondary way of data collection we have focus groups focus groups is for example say um you are trying to study the attitudes of men and women towards match and the those people are in the age group of 25 to 30 so you generally take up experts from the field say you take up one psychologist one sociologist one or from the marriage bureau actually and then probably these are the focused groups these people are focused because they are experts in their particular field and then you have a discussion and a very detailed review about the topic which is later on you know transcripted minute and they come up with an analysis so this is nothing but a, a very much a focus group type of a discussion let me check if i'm missing something yeah you you can also take up a uh, case discussions uh, so not only case studies but the cases we have with the 
uh, so we have these cases with our clients right people from counseling and clinical background would be knowing so you can also take up the verbatim data that they are uh, they have already given rather than just hypothetical cases we have naturalistic or we also have artificial based observations so how are the people behaving in a natural setting right so we all have these conversation based data collection and not just paper pencil tests or any kind of a test based data collection it is used to study thinking styles attitudes characteristics features of a particular population or even anything more than this could also be studied personality variables intelligence could be uh, studied in a qualitative manner if you want so it's basically any variable can be studied qualitatively or quantitatively it like i said it depends on the way you structure it the way you are writing your proposal that will be done too. can we get ppts uh personally for us i am not sure i will get back with this too thematic analysis themes are nothing but the prominent characteristics that are there in the data you collect those and on the basis of the, those themes uh, we analyze the data okay correlational research uh, now we will go into the types of quantitative research so qualitative research does not necessarily have any type of research ma'am i didn't get thematic analysis Theoretical analysis is basically when you uh, when you are having a lot of qualitative data. So I had been a participant to one of the qualitative research. So in that they were studying uh, attitudes of girls towards some social phenomenon. I don't remember that was it four five years ago. Uh, so that person had taken girls or uh, typically women of different age groups, right from childhood to the geriatric population, uh, married and married, then married, divorced, uh, married and unfortunately she lost her husband joint family nuclear family so they had a lot of these factors or you know variety through which they had taken the sample so that person or that researcher would have got different themes uh, so say uh, the attitude of the women towards marital system from a joint family from a nuclear family then attitude of a child i mean the women but a small child towards career adolescent towards career Single mother towards career. So here they had put it in a theme format of career, then uh, say a marital system, say kids, say family system, and then they had also put up themes like family and small child, family and adolescent, and then on the basis of those themes they had written a written an interpretation out of it because it was almost two and a half to three hours interview with just me. Like that, the particular researcher had a participant size of hundred or one fifty. So just imagine how much data the individual will have. Half of it will not be related to the research. Half of it will not be considered into the research, and half of it will be. So we also need certain scrutiny when it comes to um, qualitative research. So they decide on certain themes. So in simple terms, you can understand theme as a broad factor under which they put in a multiple other factors and come up with an interpretation. I hope you are clear with this. Ma'am, I have a question. Yes. Ma'am, yes. Ma uh, you told that IQ can be measured in a qualitative manner. Can you explain this? IQ can be measured in a qualitative manner, as in you can uh, simply chat with the person and probably measure the person's vocabulary and have a correlation of it with the vocabulary test on WISC and then check. So, uh, what I mean to say is. Uh, you can measure any factor on qualitative or quantitative just because i had given examples of characteristics thinking styles and attitude doesn't mean that only these three factors can be studied that was the uh, whole idea of me making that statement that you can study any factor in a quantitative or a qualitative basis or even a mixed basis that we will come to in the last slide for today but it all depends on the way you are putting up your research proposal Okay, the way you are designing your research proposal. So you do not have any specific factors that are only meant for qualitative. Certain specific factors only meant for qualitative. It is not the case. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Fine. So now we are moving ahead with quantitative research and the types or designs under it. One is a uh, correlational research. Correlational research is a type of a quantitative research. It is not an experimental model. so it does not give us a cause and effect relationship 
because experimental model gives us a cause and effect relationship but correlational model just finds the relationship between the two variables how are they related rise in one variable leads to rise in another variable they are positively correlated as simple drop in one variable leads to drop in the other variable it is neg negatively related as simple so the relationship is negative correlation between the two oh i'm sorry positive correlation between the two negative is inverse relation uh, uh what do you say increase in one variable and decrease in the other variable is a negative relationship and zero correlation is there is no correlation between them. right so this is the very simple basic understanding of what a correlational research is so again the same example uh, your emotional intelligence and empathy so increase in the level of emotional intelligence will lead to increase in the level of empathy it means that they have a positive correlation between the two or decrease in ei would lead to decrease in empathy again it is a positive relationship between the two both the variables are moving in the same direction so it is a positive relationship when we talk about negative relationship emotional intelligence increase in emotional intelligence will decrease will lead to decrease in the level of anxiety or decrease in the level of aggression this is a negative or an inverse relation between the two so the research or results on the or the interpretation of the results would be negative correlation right and probably uh, anything the amount of rainfall and increase in your height i don't think there is any correlation between the two or my research proposal specifically doesn't give any correlation so it is a zero correlation right so these are certain types of your correlation again i will tell you the same thing even in quantitative you have two types correlation and the other one we are coming to is experimental model or experimental design you can use the same variables in both the designs okay uh, like i will definitely give you an example of how you can use ei and empathy in the experimental model also the whole idea of it is again how you frame your research model if you just want to study If I increase EI, what will happen to empathy? If I increase EI, what will happen to aggression? This is nothing but you are just finding the relationship between the two. How these both are related? In simple terms, if there are there is a couple, if I hurt the wife, what will happen to the husband? Okay, the husband will be very happy. So it is an inverse relation in the two, right? They are not moving in the same direction. uh if you hurt the wife the husband also gets hurt or the husband also feels bad he also feels angry it means they are both are moving in the same direction towards the negative emotions so it is you are just finding simply the relationship between the two how what do you conclude if this is the example in the first case you conclude that do, they don't really share a good relationship with each other because the husband doesn't even get angry or hurt if someone says something bad to his wife so definitely they don't have a good relationship so we definitely come up to conclusion out of it that they do not share a good relationship in the second example what do we conclude that they share a good relationship between them so this is exactly the same way we use any kind of a correlational model we just find the relationship between the two and it ends we are not doing anything more with that am i clear with this yes ma'am okay great Now we move on to the research design, which is experimental in nature. Experimental is again a type of a quantitative research. It is now based on a cause and effect relationship. Now, when I manipulate one variable, it has an impact on the other variable. When I manipulate the same variable in a different manner, the impact changes. So the cause, when I change the cause, the effect also changes. It is nothing but a cause and effect. relationship now you all are aware of the terms iv and tv so i am not going in details of that although i had written it because i was not aware uh, iv is nothing but a variable that is manipulated and tv is nothing but a variable that is affected because of the manipulation right now here uh, i have given the example of advertising and body image i will first give the same example of ei and empathy as i decided so when i say that uh, levels of emotional intelligence as the levels of emotional intelligence increase the level of empathy also increases this is a correlational model they just have a positive relationship between the two and it ends you don't have anything more to do it but now if i measure uh, your levels of ei okay and i measure your levels of empathy and i understand that 
greater levels of ei lead to greater levels of empathy now i also take the other group which have lower levels of emotional intelligence what do i do i give them certain strategies or intervention plans or therapy to increase their levels of emotional intelligence for some brief period of time as decided by the researcher after that brief period of time say one month two month three months or whatever 10 sessions 18 sessions i again check them on ei and empathy and i understand that now their levels of emotional intelligence have risen and that is the reason why their levels of empathy has risen okay so we understand the difference in the initial factor we just understood that they have a relationship but you don't know why they have a relationship what caused that relationship even if you would swap even if you would say higher levels of empathy is higher levels of emotional intelligence the meaning is going to remain the same but in a cause and effect relationship if you swap the variables that is empathy first and emotional intelligence the whole meaning of your research is going to change because here we are tapping on the cause and effect of the relationship i am going to make this even more clear as we move on to the next two slides so please hold on if you all have any doubts because that might get sorted in the next two if not i will then solve them is this clear so far ibdv if anyone doesn't know the concept of ibdv only that person will unmute and tell me so that i can Okay, I assume that we all know. Okay, now my husband can't understand IBDV, ma'am. IBDV, you're confused. IV is nothing but that variable that is manipulated. Nandini, can you help me with your uh, grade or standard, please, so that I can go into depth accordingly? No, I'm in PG. You're in PG. Okay, so you will be aware of the concepts. But I struggle with research, ma'am. Okay, no worries. No worries. So IV is nothing but the factor that is manipulated, and DV is nothing but the factor that is affected because of the manipulation. So in the above example, advertising, uh, Nandini, I just request you to wait. Okay, I will complete the further side wherein I will give you more examples of how IV and DV work. And even after that, if you don't understand, then you can tell. I will explain it to you once again. Okay, ma'am. Okay, fair. So now we talk about now experimental design also has four types of design. One is the control group and the experimental group. In a control group and experimental group, now we are going to take the above example, advertising and body image. Okay, this is the example that we are taking. So for the control group, I do not show any kind of an advertisement, and I just give them a checklist or a questionnaire or whatever my test is or my scale is to measure their levels of body. Image, whether it is negative body image or positive body image, simple. I do not show them any advertising. Experimental group receives some kind of a manipulation. So I show them different advertisements which are related to body image and your body or clothing or some cosmetics or something related to your body image, positive, negative, whatever as decided by the researcher. Let's for now take positive for body image advertisements, and then I. Check their levels of body image after administering them the advertisement or after showing them the advertisement. This is nothing but a control group, experimental group, like the name suggests. Control group. The first group is control. They are not having any kind of exposure to the independent variable, which is advertising. The experimental group is exposed to the experiment that is showing of the advertising, and then I check the levels of body image, and I hypothesize that the control group will have a mix of negative as well as positive body image or just negative body image, and the experimental group is going to have positive body image because I have shown them the positive advertisement. This is nothing but a cause and effect relationship. The cause or the reason behind having a positive body image is positive advertising. Now, I'm going to come into your point. Advertising has two levels: showing advertising and not showing advertising. That is, no advertising, and we cannot call it yes advertising, but advertising. So, this is nothing but IV. Okay. I manipulate it. I either show it or I don't show it. This is something that I, as a researcher, manipulate. And what is the effect? The effect is how you perceive your body, your body image. The first group has a mix of both, or probably just has negative, but the experimental group definitely has positive because I have shown them the positive advertising. Nandini, are you clear now? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, good. Yes. Ah, uh, is anyone saying something else? Arthi, I think you are muted. You want to say anything? 
okay pre test post test model is nothing but um, everyone in the pre test post test model is an experimental group or sometimes you can also have control group and experimental group in pre test post test model that is very much uh, subjective as per the researcher wants and that is even too complicated so we are not going into that right now and it also depends on the kind of research again like i said the process and the structuring of a research has a lot of importance we are definitely going to learn that in tomorrow's session so please be ready okay so pre test is like the name suggests we administer the scale to them first like i give the example i administer them the level uh, i administer them the empathy scale first and check as well as the emotional intelligence scale and the word and is very important in that and phase of pre test and post test model in that and phase is nothing but the intervention phase i give them therapy to better their levels of ei post test after therapy after that intervention i again administer the same scale that is the same emotional intelligence and empathy scale administered in the pre test phase and then i check the differences between the pre and the post what do i do out of all this i check whether my intervention that is my manipulation my iv had an impact on the dv or not am i clear with the pre test post test model pre test post test model in simple terms is used whenever you want to bring a change into something a big huge change into something yes control group experimental group is still more focused on the raw idea of cause and effect pre test post test model is also cause and effect definitely because it falls under experimental group but an additional advantage of pre test post test is to also bring about a change or also to predict we were talking about prediction and explanation in the quantitative aspect if we all remember right the last point here so if you want to predict that why this has happened pre test post test model is a great idea because you show this is the reason you explain the phenomena this is the explanation of my prediction and everything is seen in the very uh, same slide again in control group experimental group also you can predict you can explain you can give them the reason of why this has happened because control group na in the control group it has end but in the experimental group i could see a change so yes it is because of the manipulation okay standardized measures design or it is also called as called as independent measures design is nothing but different individuals are put into different levels of the iv so like i said there are two levels of my iv not showing the advertisement and showing advertisement so no advertising and advertising what will be what will be my random measures design for example there are 100 people i will put 1 to 50 in the control group that is no advertising group and i will put 51 to 100 in the advertising group which is the experimental group and check the differences between the two yes you can do odd even you can simply do it from 1 to 50 and 1 to 100 you can do it any see it is random like the name suggests so you do not really want to have a structure just make sure that the number of participants in both the groups is the same that's it correct Uh, or at least similar, forty-five, fifty, or forty-eight, fifty-two. That is fine, but not in one group it is fifty and the other group is having hundred or seventy or eighty. That is not acceptable. So randomized group. In the same manner, you can also have repeated measures. Repeated measures is the same set of participants, same fifty people in the advertising group and in the no advertising group. That is nothing but a repeated measures. Defined. Okay. Any doubts so far? Oh, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, I just want to know the difference between randomized measure design and repeated measure design. Okay. For example, Pranjali, you are doing an experiment, and you select Adrita as um, as your sample in the control group. So you do not show her any advertisement, and you check her a body image. Okay. check her perceptions about her body image and the second one is say you are uh, getting sneha and you are showing her an advertisement and then you are checking her a body image are these two different people or same people pranjali mom different different people so that is nothing but randomized measures to say okay now for example in the same manner you are just uh, taking adrita you are first show just giving her a body image test and then after a few days you are showing her an advertisement and then giving her a body image test 
then you are using the same person person as your participant same so this is nothing but a repeated measures see focus on the words repeated the same people are repeated so that is repeated measures is it yeah okay great mixed research design is nothing but both qualitative and quantitative methods of data collection it is nothing but a combination of both it gives the pluses and again the minuses of both so for example i am doing an experiment of how uh, advertising has an impact on my body image be it a pre test post test experimental randomized repeat or whatever design you use okay after getting this quantitative data then while you are post task questions or maybe you can actually frame a questionnaire also and also administer or collect information on an interview basis in the 15 minutes 30 minutes 1 or 2 hours whatever amount of interview time you want you can take an interview and in detail ask about how the advertising had an impact and how your thought process has changed what was your what was your initial thought process then how did advertising impact what are the emotions that you underwent did you undergo any different kind of attitude or perception towards your body so we can frame any kind of um, qualitative based questions and collect data from that also so it is one advantage here is that you don't only have numbers or a strong quantitative data to support but you also have good qualitative reasons qualitative data is very rich because it is very subjective you can tap very subjective opinions of people and they are definitely going to help you because my scores on body image after advertising and say Uh, Nandini scores on body image after advertising might be the same, exactly the same. Five on ten, five on ten for both of us. But my way of perceiving my body or my thought patterns might be different from what she has. Or even say, for example, Kuchhi or Neha, they both have the same scores. They both have a very positive or very negative body image, for example. But their thinking styles might be different. Correct. The way advertising has impacted them might be different. So we are focusing on those subjective opinions of them because quantitative data will not give you the subjective. They will not give you their own opinions and understanding of it. Correct. So while generalizing, it gives you more rich information because more amount of data gives you greater generalization capacity. Okay. That's it for today. I will be continuing tomorrow. with the same thing so for tomorrow i am open to questions for uh, from today's session just give me one minute to finish uh, for tomorrow i will like you all to come up with a list of few variables those variables could be from any domain of uh, psychology it could be cognitive social environmental psychology it could be whatever business industrial counseling which are a positive or anything apart from this okay these were just examples that you can think of come with a list of variables just don't take two or three because tomorrow we are actually going to learn one how to structure and write the proposal like you also we have rules and guidelines to follow yes we have so i i will not be able to give you all the rules for each and every type because they slightly differ but i will definitely give a framework of these rules and we will sit and form different types of research uh, models or different types of research topics by ourselves right okay that's it from my side for today that uh, forming so, yeah. the variables i didn't get you what did you mean by forming the variables not forming the variables forming a research proposal out of the variables that you have come up with so you all have to form a list of variables and be ready for tomorrow so that we don't keep that thinking right understand what is the making the variables uh so what is a variable adita variable, variable is something that you study variable that yeah. i know but so come up with a list of variables resilience hope uh not okay. green tea how does green tea affect weight is okay but it is not necessarily a psychological variable and since we are from so the same domain yeah definitely i understand fragility is an example but i just want to clarify because tomorrow people will come up with these kind of variables and i totally agree to uh, like i totally respect everyone's creativity but since we all are fortunately from the same domain let's stick to psychological variables it could be anything like for example depression stress anxiety hope resilience uh, cognition you have thinking perception anything so these are called as variables adrita i hope i'm clear now yes ma'am it's clear okay great any more questions for today 
okay then thank you we are ready to wind up for the day had a great time with all of you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am